Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're doing my 2020 reading goals. So I already filmed my 2019 reading goals wrap up, so if you guys want to see how that went, I will post that down below as well as up here in the cards. It didn't go the greatest, but it didn't go the worst either. Like I've said in a few videos, 2019 was sort of a reading slump year for me, so my goals for 2020 are kind of based to overcome that and fix some of the issues that I had last year and just see how things go. So I've got my new book planner here and my goals written out, so we're just gonna get started. So my first goal is to read 100 books. I actually put it to read 125 on Goodreads because for the last three years I've read over 100 books because I include my audiobooks as well. So I'm just keeping that goal. I have it set a little higher on Goodreads because I know I'll probably hit it. And yeah, I would actually like to physically read or listen to 100 books because in 2019 I physically read like 93 books and then this year I listened to like 97 books so it got really close on both accounts so I kind of need to keep better track of that. But that's just my main goal that I kind of set every year. I'll have a video coming out very soon on how you can read 100 books this year if you've never done it before. I literally went from reading like five books a year to 100 like almost overnight and it's a lot easier than you think especially if you incorporate audio books so I'll give you guys my best tips and tricks coming out in the next couple weeks hopefully. My next reading goal is to reread the Harry Potter series. I had this on my list last year but this year I actually received the first illustrated edition of Harry Potter as a Christmas present and I was kind of waiting on that to start my reread. I should have just bought it but I didn't but I got it this year for Christmas. It'd be something that I definitely want to do next year. I don't plan on rereading all of them but I'd like to at least catch up with the illustrated editions. Next up is to read five classics. I had a goal last year to read 10 classics because the year before I read eight so I figured I would at least come close to that but I only read like one or two. It was really bad. So this year I'm setting a really nice and easy. I mostly read kids classics anyway so hopefully this is attainable. It does take me a little bit longer to read classics but I read A Picture of Dorian Gray last year and it was one of my top 10 favorite books of the year so I do hope to continue reading more classics in 2020. Next up is to read five Newbery Award books. I had this set last year because I have a Newbery Awards reading challenge that is a long-term reading goal. Newbery Award is, is an award of excellence for children's literature or middle grade literature. They pick a book every year that gets this award and it started in like 1922 so there's almost a hundred books now so this is definitely something that I'd like to do over my lifetime and I've had this goal in mind since I was a kid but I'm being stubborn and I want to start at the beginning <laughs> and I did last year I read one Newbery Award book and it was the very first one and I don't have a hard time reading older books but this was almost like seven or eight hundred pages and I did it on audio but it was quite brutal. So I hope I can get to a five this year. The rest of them seem quite a bit shorter, so hopefully this will be attainable. Next, I would like to read 10 new releases. This is a totally attainable goal. I technically would like to read 12 because I like to read one a month. Last year in 2019, I wound up reading 18, which was really good for me. I do most of my new releases via audiobook just because I have so many like past books to physically read and I can get them pretty easily from Overdrive and Hoopla. So hopefully I will continue that with this year. Stay tuned in a couple days for my most anticipated releases of 2020 as well. My sixth goal is to read five big books that are over 500 pages or write at 500 pages. I'm not sure how good I did with this in 2019, but I think I hit that goal. That's just kind of my overall goal and I don't care whether it's audio or physical. I'd like to at least have one of them be physical. I have some Cassandra Clare books in mind, so that shouldn't be hard to hit, but it's just kind of a good, a good goal to have. So I'm not reading only small books. And then my last two goals are kind of just bookish goals in general, so I'd like to get new bookshelves. So I moved into our house in 2018 and we purchased these shelves kind of like last minute because we were spending a lot of money decorating the house and everything. I got them from Walmart, they were like $30 and super cheap and while they technically have held up for two years, they are falling apart. I, as you can see, I'm sure I look a little like off kilter because they're starting to like bow. These are actually doing the best, but the ones down below are about ready to snap. I actually have the books like stacked this way to like support <laughs> the bottom shelves and I originally wanted white shelves. I know everybody has white shelves but for filming purposes and decorating purposes they just are so much more aesthetically pleasing and I didn't wait to get them and I should have. So I do plan on saving some of the money I get from selling books and trading books and things like that and just any extra money I earn to save up for new bookshelves. I want to get the Ikea ones because while they aren't the best quality, tend to work for everyone here on booktube because everybody has them and they seem to hold up really 
really, really well. I think they're like around $90 or something like that. I plan on getting three big ones and a middle one that will fit in the corner and then that'll be it. That'll be all the shelves that I need for this room. I'm going to redo my office and just kind of do all kinds of fun stuff and hopefully I can film all that for you guys as well. And my last goal is kind of just a general goal is to just read before bed. <laughs> so I did this a lot the first two years that I really started heavily reading again. Last year I kind of did a lot more watching TV and things before bed, which is not good for my health. I actually sleep so much better if I'm not looking at a screen. We know tons of studies have been shown that that's proven true and just like something about reading even if the book is really exciting it will still help me like sleep better and more sound and if you just read an hour before bed you can hit a large number of books and that's one reason that this year my amount of books read was like a lot lower than it was in previous years just because I wasn't reading before bed. So that's just kind of a general goal is just to read before bed. I don't have to read every night but just like to read more often before I go to bed and it just kind of helps calm me down. So those are all my goals for 2020. Let me know if you guys have reading goals for 2020. Do you set goals or does that stress you out and you just kind of like to like go about your day randomly? Like I'm not setting these as like I'm going to beat myself up if I don't hit them, like setting goals and having them in my mind to try and achieve and kind of work towards them in like a calm and relaxing way. <laughs> so let me know if you guys like this type of video and I will see you guys next time on the right side. Bye. And it's like a still somewhat cheaper option. I think they're like around 90 a piece. So many airplanes.